There, that should do it. Hi. I'm just putting the last touches to a little upgrade to the Meta Realitator. I should now be able to get back to the world where I originally came from. Or at least, a place similar. With a bit of luck. If I'm not mistaken. Actually, this is pretty much a shot in the dark. But here goes nothing. You know what? This may actually have worked! Ladies, gentlemen, greetings, and welcome to the Kinetoscope Parlor, where we meet strange and wonderful people. I'm your host, Baron Celsius von Fahrenheit, and I'm here today in the company of Andrew Aldenbach, of the Jules Verne Fantastical Society of Halifax. Welcome to the Kinetoscope Parlor. Thank you, Baron. Pleasure to be here. I would like you to tell us what is this place and what is currently going on here. Well, what you see about you is Sherbrooke Village, which is part of the Nova Scotia Provincial Museum uh, and you're seeing here in the middle of the 1800s, because this village is always in the middle of the 1800s. Uh, now that said, this weekend you're seeing here in the midst of the second first annual Time and Travelers Reunion. So what in blazes is the Time Traveling Reunion? The Time Travelers Reunion, every year, at the same time, of course, because there's only one of them, here in Sherbrooke Villages, uh, steampunks, time travelers, as it were, from all over, uh, from this year, at least as far away as Ontario and beyond, uh, come here to spend the weekend sharing, learning, adventuring, uh, enjoying. The costume you're presently wearing, uh, what does it represent? Ah, Dutch Allenbach, engineer third class aboard Nemo's <coughs> The Nautilus. This costume is inspired more of what I was doing here at the Time Travelers Reunion, where I'm creating a line of 18th and 19th century fragrances and products, and I wanted to show that gypsy style of traveling the world, looking for the perfect dyes and the perfect scents and the perfect oils. An air crack and hunter. I work for Queen Vitrix. I have a radio pack and I operate ground communications and logistics and coordinate the strikes on the air kraken beasts. I wanted to blend sci-fi and fantasy together and so I'm a steampunk elf. It basically it represents the uh, British working class, probably like from London, I kind of like the Bowery Boys era or from uh, Piccadilly kind of region. Just that kind of everyday uh, workman, you know, I could be working on a cart, I could be working on the docks and that sort of thing. I think it represents uh, sexy Victorian England. You know, a little bit naughty and a little bit nice. And a little bit science fiction. Well, I'm uh, floating a syndicate to build an underground mining machine. And it is, of course, military based because we have a lot of military contracts to fulfill. So basically, I am dressed in the military style but with the explorer safari uh, aspect to it. I'm wearing a sari. Um, and that's an Indian dress. This costume is basically a wastrel inheritor of a peer of the realm who's uh, possibly an illegitimate son, and he's wasting all of his inheritance on trying to become the world's next big hip, or sorry, chap hop star. And the rest of his time is usually done creating abominations of science to try to aid him in that endeavor. And what is your main personal interest in steampunk in this time traveler's reunion? Well, for steampunk, I love stories. I'm a librarian. I love stories. I love these stories. I love steampunk stories. So this is a chance to share with each other our love of those stories and to show off to people who don't already know that they love those stories why they are going to love those stories. Uh, as for here at the reunion, it's, it's, well, it's the people. Uh, we've got people who are coming and playing dress up and playing. We have people who are coming and not playing dress up because they don't even know about coming to play who are all discovering that they all love the same thing. Basically, I like the, uh, the whole costume idea, the history behind it, and uh, just the, the people, that you get all the interesting uh, 
what other people are doing and taking ideas from what they've done and say, I can do that, or I can, that gives me an idea to do something else. I like the fact that you can come out here and meet other people who have the same interests as you, and it's, it's a beautiful location. I like steampunk because you get to take things that are from the old times, things that are forgotten, you get to take them and recombine them and reinvent them in new ways, either be it like fiction or history or just like antiques and other like just castaway things. You get to turn them into something new and beautiful with a crazy narrative. Um, I kind of kind of found steampunk just by accident and I just love the idea of kind of Victorian England, which I love the clothing, the, the big skirts, the corsets. But with steampunk, it has that sexy, fun edge to it, and I really love it. And for me, I was always a geek in high school, and this is the first time in my life that I feel like I fit in and that I'm kind of cool. <laughs> steampunk in general is very interesting because it blends not only a study of history, but I, I like the creativity, the artisan and engineering of it. It's really interesting from that perspective. Uh, because it, it lends itself to so many different skill sets and ideas. It's so open-ended, it doesn't exclude anybody in that sense. It's, it's very open to anything you can imagine. I was attracted to steampunk because I'm a science fiction geek since the age of three who loves history. And it was a perfect blend of history and science fiction. Well, I like the steampunk because it allows a lot of freedom. There are no rules. Uh, there are no set organizational things that you have to follow. You can come and be yourself. It's a very accepting group, and anyone making an attempt is welcome and brought into the group. It's not like you have to be part of a core group to participate or have a certain dress standard. And I think having been in organizations where there are a lot of rules, it really is nice and refreshing to get into a group where anything goes, as long as you're having fun and participating. For your geek question, I'd like to know if you did live in such a village in the 1800s, what would be your role in that village? Oh, um, probably some poor, overworked, very dirty laborer who didn't make nearly enough money. <laughs> the 1800s were not a pleasant place. To be honest, probably servant. As in, um, I am a nurturer, I am the hose cleaner, I am the person that polishes the silver, I'm the person that takes care of families, and I find that those are the roles that I usually do take. Ideally, I'd be a remittance man, with an independent income as long as I stayed away from England. Uh, however, if I were forced to work for a living, I would probably be either a school teacher or a lawyer's clerk or something in the uh, academic line. Well, if I lived in this time period, I would definitely be a wealthy lady so I could throw balls. <laughs> well, here in Cheerbrook, it would be probably working on the boats. Where they, they built a lot of uh, sailing vessels here. That's probably what I would be doing. If I had a role here in the village, it would actually be the teacher. Uh, honestly, uh, in, in my life, I, I have done teaching in the public school system and it's something I greatly enjoyed and since they have a school here in the village, I would be a part of that in preparing future generations. I would like to be like a herbalist or, you know, take, you know, finding natural treatments for illnesses. I find that really interesting. My role in this village, I'd probably say I'd probably uh, be the sheriff because I checked out his digs and they're pretty awesome. Not many people get to have a dungeon in their house and I think that's pretty cool. I would play around a lot because there's lots of space. Well, thank you for joining us and enlightening us about this great event. My pleasure, Baron, and fair weather and a following windy. Thank you very much. That's all for today. I'm Baron Celsius von Fahrenheit here in Sherbrooke Village telling you to stay weird and we shall meet again at the Kinetoscope Parlor. Hi everyone, Alex here. I hope you liked the show. If you did, as always, please subscribe, like, comment, and most of all, share it with your friends so more people can see it and appreciate it. Uh, I had a lot of fun in Sherbrooke Village for the Time Travelers reunion. That was actually my second time there. I went for the first one and I knew I wanted to go back and do a show about it. Uh, the people in Sherbrooke are fantastic. The, the place is amazing. If you have any interest in the 1800s and are ever near Halifax, 
go there for an afternoon, uh, even if it's, if it's not the Time Traveler's Reunion, you're gonna love it. Uh, the Jules Verne Fantastical Society are just amazing people, they welcomed us, me, my friend, my wife, uh, with open arms. We had a lot of fun with them, both at the Time Traveler's Reunion and in Halifax. Uh, if you're looking for a steampunk group and you're anywhere near them, check them out. They're, you're gonna have a great time with them. Uh, on the more technical side, uh, the hardest part of this episode was the fact that it was my first outdoor shoot and it was a windy day. I think the sound suffered a little bit, but I think I managed to salvage most of it. Uh, and there's also the fact that I did some stupid things with the setup of my microphone and about that I need to thanks and congratulate a little Calliope who not only rose the cuteness factor of the episode by a great deal, uh, she also did her interview like a pro and she did it like a pro twice because the first time I forgot to turn on the mic. So thank you Calliope, you did wonderful. So I guess that's about it for this one. Uh, I'll see you next time for something a bit stranger than usual. <laughs>